Hello and welcome to the last section of Mastering TypeScript. The previous section was on advanced ES6 and ES7 features. In this section we'll look at several ways we can overcome statically typed gaps. What exactly do I mean by that though? By bringing us static typing, TypeScript brought us out of the wild west of client and server-side scripting in JavaScript. There's more ways we can benefit though. What's shown in red is areas of an application that typically aren't connected with static typing. We typically don't have static typing between our server and client-side code. So if our server-side code for receiving requests changes, the client-side code that sends those requests won't throw a compile error to remind us to update our client-side code. Also, typically in our view code, like HTML, we haven't had breaking changes in the view code desirably notify us with compile errors that our client-side TypeScript is incorrect and needs to be fixed. We also haven't had compile errors when we use the view code incorrectly. In this section, we're going to look at ways we can solve all these problems with TypeScript. First in this video, we'll look at a crucial element to bridging the server-client statically typed gap, which is sharing code across applications. Second, we'll look at a video on using interfaces and shared code to bridge statically typed gaps. For the example, we'll bridge the code between a client-server application with this technique. Third, we'll talk about a more experimental method of using code generation on the server side to update the client side. Finally, we'll look briefly at how using TSX files can help us bring our view code into statically typed TypeScript code. Now we begin our first video on how we can share code across applications. There's lots of ways of doing what we're gonna talk about in this video. And so we're just going to do an overview of some of the basic principles. We'll talk about storing our code in one application and then pushing or pulling the code to or from the other application. Additionally, we'll look at storing the code separately and pushing or pulling the code to or from our applications. We'll also look at what's done in the slice of pizza sample application. In our slice of pizza sample application, we have our server app and web app. Sometimes we want to share code such as utility classes or interfaces between these two applications or even other applications we work with. There's two main solutions we can use. The first is to move the code outside our applications, then either push the code from this area into our applications or pull it into the applications from one of the applications individually. So for example, the server app might use a build script to copy the files from where the code is stored separately into the server app, instead of the code stored separately copying it into our server app. The second option is that we could store the code in one of our applications, then create a script that will copy it to the other. For example, the server app in this example contains the shared code and it's copying it over to the web app. This could also push the code to the web app, or the web app could pull the code from the server app. So which one of these methods should we use? Well, it depends. When you pick what to do, you should choose what makes sense for your scenario. In the case of our sample application, I'm storing our server model interfaces in the sample app, then pushing the changes made to the server interfaces to the client side in the server app's build script. The reason I'm pushing the changes from the server app is because it's an easier setup to ensure the web app has the correct interfaces. So what about pulling changes? Well, pulling changes is great for when we have reusable code to use in multiple applications because it allows us to request code from the shared code only when we need it. For example, if we were to make a breaking change in our shared code, we would only be forced to change applications that request the new code. One of the best ways of doing this is to create a package. You can do that using NPM or NuGet. I would recommend you research the topics shown here. For NPM, a private NPM repository allows you to privately keep and share packages across projects very easily. I would highly recommend it if you were to work with a team of programmers where you want to distribute the packages amongst your team. Another topic you could look into is using a local NPM dependency. This allows you to specify a local file path that your package is stored at, then install it as a package of the current application. Finally, if you use NuGet, there's always the ability to create and install a NuGet package locally. 
In this video, we looked at sharing code across multiple applications. I would recommend you research and try out what was discussed in this video to find out what works well for you. You might even find better ways of doing this. In the next video, we're going to look at how we can bridge the server-client statically typed gap by using interfaces and a shared configuration.